Hey guys, it's Jeff from San Diego Seed Company back in the garden on a beautiful 90 degree October day in San Diego. For those of you who are in zone 9 and 10, which I think is a lot of our audience, you know October is one of those crazy months where one day you'll be wearing your flannels and your sweaters and then the next day you're in your tank tops and flip flops. Today is a tank top day, although I didn't want to show too much skin on the channel. But you have tuned in not for my wardrobe, you have tuned in to learn about turning over your bed. This applies for summer into fall, but it can also apply for winter or early spring into late spring. Usually I do this method twice a year. It can be kind of tricky because in the shoulder seasons, you've still got things that are fruiting and you're waiting to harvest them, but you've got plants underneath the grow lights that are ready to come out of the garden. So you've really got to time it well there. I always tell my wife in October and in April, you're not going to see me that much on the weekends and she's a saint for it watching the kids so I can get out here, get my hands dirty and make this garden grow. Today I have got the 12 step process from turning a bed from actively growing crops into just a little refresh. Give it give it a little more life so it, you can replenish it with air and water and nutrients and compost and all the good things that your soil needs to be able to grow new plants in the next season. Now I said in the intro you do this twice a year. You really can do this any time that your bed is going to be completely transitioned from one crop to another. So it may be in October, maybe in April. Whenever you're taking crops out and putting new crops in, you're going to want to do this 12-step method to ensure your soil has what it needs to grow your crops well. Okay, so step number one of the 12-step process is shock and disbelief. No, that's the wrong one. It's a terrible joke. Step number one is something that it took me an actually long time to learn because when I first moved to San Diego was the first time that I ever put mulch on a garden. Back in Indiana, it rains all the time. It's moist all throughout the growing season. So you really didn't use mulch a whole lot. We used mulch in the pathways to keep down weeds, but never on the growing medium. So that was kind of a learning curve. And when I went to turn the beds over, it was kind of confusing. So let's get into it. I'll show you what I mean. Step one is take this beautiful mulch and get it out of here. The reason that you don't want to leave the mulch in during this process is as you're aerating and adding things in, the last thing that you want is a bunch of woody mulch down deep into your soil. Now mulch works great on the top of soil, but if you get too much wood down into your soil, it affects the water drainage. As this breaks down over years and years and years, it's going to take nitrogen out of the soil, which you don't want, which is one of the downsides of hugo culture. But you really have to stay on top of adding extra nitrogen back into the soil as this breaks down. So step number one is get the mulch out of there so you can actually work the soil. So let's do that now. One of the nice things about having uh, inline drip in these connectors is I can just take it over and rotate it on the connector and get that out of the way so I can do the work. Now, as I get them into big piles like this, I can just gonna take them with my hands dump it off to the side. But as you'll see, when I get lower, I don't want to lose a lot of soil. And uh, there is a lot of soil that has worked its way up into the mulch. So what I do is take my sifter, sift that soil out back into the bed, and then remove the mulch. Let me show you. So the little pieces less than a quarter inch that fall through that mesh are not gonna mess up the water retention or the drainage of soil, so you're good to go. You actually do want a little bit of organic matter, i.e. wood, carbon, in your soil, but not too much and definitely not big chunky pieces. Step number two is weed. Inevitably, no matter how much you've been on top of it throughout the growing season, you're gonna get some weeds in your bed, especially the bigger plants that kinda hide the weeds. We have got some sweet potatoes still in the ground and we've got cucamelons. There is Bermuda grass going crazy all throughout this bed. So I'm going to show you a quick method that I use to remove as much Bermuda grass as possible. Again, I will say this every time I talk about Bermuda grass, if you've got it, you're probably always going to have it, but you can mitigate it by getting it out at the root level and I'll show you how to do that now. A lot of you are used to weeding by hand, which is fine for most weeds, but if I were to go and try to find where this is coming out of the ground, okay, right here. I found it. If I pull this, just listen to this. Oh my gosh, it almost worked. Okay, this is perfect. Do you see all along this string root, root, root? 
Every, every little section has its own root. What makes this so, so, so hard to get rid of is every single section is going to send out roots, it's, then it's going to send out its own rhizome. These rhizomes are sharp enough that they will go through a tarp. So you can't tarp Bermuda grass out. There's really no way to get it out other than getting down to the root. So let me follow this all the way back. You can just see this is just has been established. So I was talking over it, but there was that sound. At some point, that rhizome is gonna break. They're at the same time very, very sharp, but it's almost as if they were made to break so that they can't get their roots pulled up. So you're gonna break that if you just try to do it by hand. Let me show you how I do it and get a little better results. Okay, so you can do this with a hand trowel or a hand shovel, but I have such a Bermuda problem here, I use a full-size shovel. So I'm gonna go back maybe three inches behind where this goes into the ground. And I'm gonna put my full weight into here, get down there and unearth this whole thing. And what's gonna happen is the soil is gonna loosen up and it's gonna reveal this nice root ball. See, it's even going down. This is a good six inches down there and I can start to fill the roots and then I can actually get them out. So if you have Bermuda grass, try this method, actually get the roots and get this out of your property. Step one, remove mulch. Step two, remove weeds. Number three is aerate. Let me show you what I mean. So depending on the size of your bed, you could do this with a hand shovel, but this is big enough to warrant a regular shovel. I'm gonna go through here, put the shovel in, and just lift it up. I'm not turning it over. I'm definitely not tilling, but I am aerating. I'm just giving space for air and then eventually water to get in there. Because a common misconception is that you water your soil because plants need water. This is absolutely true, but it's not the full story. The other thing that needs water is your soil and the microbes. If you have completely dry, dry soil, there's no way that the tiny bugs and microbes and everything are gonna be able to live and do what they're meant to do, and that is break down the nutrients and get them to a point where your plant roots can access them. Okay, so this is a great time to mention. These 12 steps are for existing gardens that you are just transitioning from one season to the next. If this is the very first time you've ever planted a garden, we do have a video about that that you should check out because what I'm saying today leaves out one step and that is tilling. I know that's a bad word for a lot of you, but when you're really breaking into ground for the first time, you are gonna wanna till and do a few extra steps which Bridgette has shown you in this video here. Okay, I'm gonna give you number four, five, six, and seven all right now. That is water, compost, water, fertilizer. Let me show you what that looks like. Now a lot of you are thinking, man, he just watered a lot. Let me show you something. So it looks pretty moist. That was about the first maybe half inch. Down here is still completely dry. I broke up watering into several steps because you're going to want to do it throughout this process. So this right here has got to be the most gratifying thing we do in this garden. Instead of taking all of our green waste and kitchen scraps to the dump, or even worse, to sit in a plastic trash bag for almost eternity, we have taken that and made compost, which we're going to put back into the beds and increase our soil fertility. So I'm going to put about a half an inch to an inch dusting on top of the soil. So let's do that now. For those of you who have ever bought compost from a big box store or gotten it from the dump, you know compost can be pretty hydrophobic. So since step five is compost, step six is going to be water. For this one, you're really going to want to take it slow because it's going to pool. You just have to give it time to let it go past the compost down into the soil. And hopefully that aeration that you did earlier is going to create gaps in the soil so that compost can get deep down in there and start doing its magic. Okay, step seven is fertilize. No, we do not make our own fertilizer, which would be really cool, but we don't. But any granular fertilizer. Now, keep in mind, this is different than compost tea. This is different than a liquid fertilizer. I'm doing granular fertilizer in between seasons because this is gonna release nutrients over a long period of time. So it's gonna last the whole growing season, hopefully. The liquid fertilizer is more of like a shot in the arm or like a quick snack for the plants that you would do in seed starting or throughout the season. 
But granular fertilizer, this one is a 463. 555s five, five, are popular. Now if you're confused by the numbers, just remember nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, N, P, K. I've heard that if you can find a fertilizer where the N is half the P, that's pretty much what most plants need. So look for that. But 555 five, five is still gonna do the trick. So it's 463. The other thing to consider is the back of the packaging has really important information on the types of crops that you're growing, the types of soil, how big your space is. So really pay attention when you're dosing it out to your soil. Now, a lot of you are gonna hate me for this. I'm not gonna go inside and get a one cup measuring cup. I'm gonna eyeball this. This says one and a half cups per 10 square feet of garden space. I've got a four by three bed here, which is about 12 feet. So uh, let's just do almost two cups, somewhere between one and a half and two. You don't have to be exact, but you don't want to get double or triple the amount of nutrients in the soil because it's just going to go to waste and it's not going to be healthy for your plants. I just have a good feeling that was exactly one and three quarters cups. All right, now we're on to step eight. You guessed it, we're gonna water again. Now that I've watered twice, with some time in between those waterings, the water that was once on the first half inch of the soil has hopefully made its way down a little further and I'm gonna give it some more. Okay, on to step number nine and that is rake. What you're looking for here is just to get a flat surface. You don't want a lot of divots, you don't want holes, you don't want it to be at an angle because when you do water or the drip goes on, it's gonna tend to go downhill as water does. So the other thing that is happening while I'm raking, I don't think I have to bend over. Maybe I do, I can't tell. So I'm taking that water that was only in the top section of the soil and mixing it down a couple more inches deep because of the rake. So not only are you flattening the area, but you are mixing that water into the soil as well. So I typically start with a rake, but I have found much better success using my hands. Okay, can anybody guess what the next step is? I'll wait. It's water. Okay, so let's review. One, remove the mulch. Two, weed. Three, aerate. Four, water. Five, compost. Six, water. Seven, fertilizer. Eight, water. Nine, rake. Ten, water. Now we're to 11, and that is mulch. So we're gonna put the mulch that we took off earlier back on. So you will find that what you take off is not gonna be enough when you put it back on. So I recommend in between each season, going to get a little more mulch to add back in, whether it's chip drop at your city dump, or even from the store. Because if you water like we did, and then don't put mulch on, that water is just gonna completely evaporate. So you're gonna wanna get that mulch back on as soon as possible to keep the water in so the microbes and the soil can do its thing. So I stole a little bit from the walkway. We should be good to go now onto step 12. Okay, so here we are, step 12, and that is, of course, plant your crops. Now, this does not have to be the day that you did it. It's actually might be better to wait a few days to let that water really seep down to spread out through capillary action it's going to go from the top all the way all throughout the bed what water wants to do is to be even so water does not like to bunch together it's going to spread out to those dry areas so by giving that a few days you're really going to be better and you'll find when you go into plant you're going to have evenly moist soil but for the sake of this video i'm going to try to plant right now what i'm going to do is take this volunteer and try to transplant it into this bed where i want it and i I still have to work this bed, so this thing is gonna get taken out anyway. Now let's go put this in the bed that we just fixed. So I found an emitter right here. I'm gonna put it right on the emitter, make a little hole, delicately put these roots down here. I'm gonna try to match the soil level as much as possible. Now I'm really gonna to wanna to keep an eye on this as with all new crops, as soon as you put them in, they're really gonna go into shock. So you wanna give them a little extra water than you typically would. Okay, so there you have it. That's 12 steps. Let's see if I can remember them without looking at my list this time. Remove the mulch, weed, aerate. I don't know why I can't look into the camera to think. I gotta look up into the sky. Water, compost, water, fertilizer, water, rake, water, 
and mulch. Now a lot of you are like, that's really only like five or six. I just multiplied water all throughout. Yeah, that's true. But I wanted to get to 12 because 12 is just a cool number. Disciples, dozen eggs, number of players on a football field if you have one too many. I don't know. I'm sure there's a lot more. If you do those 12 things every season change, you're going to have better soil, healthier plants, and more food to eat for you and your family.